Okay, when you walk up to a lathe, oh my, oh my, never do that. Do not just walk up to a lathe and turn the machine on. Don't leave the machine in a direction where you could accidentally hit the switch and turn it on. I've been given a hard time many times for leaving Chuck Key in the lathe. It's quite common. Now with this running, it's very possible that you could slip, hit the clutch, move it a little bit. Um, well, that wasn't in gear, there's more realistic. You could accidentally move the clutch, have it go with the motor running. Um, if somebody had left the clutch engaged and you just turned the switch on, big danger, big danger. When you come up to the machine, get the clutch in neutral if it has clutch. If it doesn't have a clutch, then be all the more leery of the switch. Um, the whole thing with the chuck being in here, many times, many times, we're using, uh, and this piece I decided not to do in here. I'm gonna go do it in the mill, which will be another, uh, another little video. And the reason why I did decided to do it in the mill is because I don't wanna put too much stress on the center point it is very hard. I didn't know if it was or not. Uh, lathe was close to set up correctly for this job, so I thought I'd try it here, but we'll do it in the actual milling machine. But here's, here's the point. Let's say, start the lathe up, and let's say we had just came in here and we turned the shaft, and then we put it down into brake. It is common in industry that you'll just walk over here change this out, pull this out, put it, put in the next one, try to get it straight, tighten it down, pull out your chuck key, and go back to work. Now, the most dangerous part of this is your chuck key's in here while you have a clutch that could make it turn, and you have your hand on the chuck key. You know, the chuck key in here by itself with the lathe shut off doesn't hurt anybody. When your hand is on it, it can hurt somebody. Now, if you're a newbie, if you are totally new to the lathe, don't do that procedure. Don't do it. Um, it was something we did all the time in industry. It's common changing it out. Totally the opposite from CNC lathes with everything locked away from you that can't turn on, but it was common. Um, it's still common when you're doing a lot of a part. You just leave it, leave the machine on, you kick the clutch into neutral, kick the brake in, you have your chuck key here. Uh, a friend of mine told me just, the other, just recently, he had accidentally kicked his on while he was doing this and he managed while he was pulling the chuck key out to squish his hand a little bit, but he didn't break it all up. Um, one of our commenters mentioned about how somebody had turned a lathe on with the chuck key in and their hand on it. Well, your, your hand on the chuck key that goes back to that old rule that they talk about, never leave the chuck key in there. It doesn't hurt anybody if it's just in there by itself. But if my hand is on it, now I need to really be careful as to what's going on because then I get wrapped up in it. Now it's a, a real danger. When you're first starting out, put your part in the lathe, take your chuck key out before you machine off, everything off. Be sure that it's off. Put this in neutral, and a lot of times you can do that too. Even with the clutch running, you may want to move this to a different location. Um, slide it into a neutral gear. Some machines, this one here has a neutral spot and a neutral spot, but that's not the only neutral spot. There's actually a neutral spot between two gears here too. They just didn't mark it. A lot of your old machines, you will have a neutral spot between two gears that's not marked. They figured you're smart enough to know that that's a neutral to kick it out. Now, even with the motor running, this is pretty safe. Um, but again, if you are new to the machine, clutch out if it has one, motor off, everything to where it doesn't rotate. Because that's the part that gets you in trouble is if it rotates when you're not expecting it, whether it's your chuck in here, uh, something you're grabbing around the piece, whatever. And a real good one to do, which is part of why, let's go over here to the four jaw. Don't know that we got anything in the four jaw. Nope, nothing in it, but same idea. And this is why I don't, tr I have been lately 
Yes, I've been trying to leave these in for the commenters because it does get more comments and people like it, you know, like to comment how terrible I am for leaving men. But in a non-YouTube world, sometimes we would leave them in, and that was where it first started that people were picking on me. Sometimes it's laying here, laying here, might be over in the bin. We might have changed chucks. This might be the wrong key. Uh, we have multiple chuck keys for this machine, so we can't just hang one up and say that's going to be the place that it lives. We should have more room in the shop, have a place for each one color-coded with the chuck. It's not realistic. But here is why a lot of times I want to have the chuck key in the lathe when I come in the next day. I want it there. Reason I want it there is because the first thing I'm going to do, I have a piece in here, I'm going to recheck and make sure that that piece is tight. I was working on it hard yesterday, and I want to make sure that the heating and cooling didn't loosen it up in the jaw. Much more dangerous to have your part fly out than some silly chuck. I am reminding myself to take care of this. In the morning, I come in here. Maybe it, it got, I was working hard, it might have got moved a little bit. I want to check the alignment. So I come through here. First thing I do is I make sure that each of these are tight. I might have an indicator back on there, checking again that it's true and square. Then I put that away. Now, at this point, I've already turned the chuck around a full turn. If for some reason I was using a three jaw, and usually I do that with a three jaw even, I'll snug it up on all three corners. I just happen to. So part of what that's doing is rotating this around, telling me there's nothing that's hitting it. And I've had several people mention that in comments, that besides making sure the chuck's not in there, rotate this around once. Very, very good if you have odd-shaped pieces, legs, things hanging out. Um, take a look at before you turn anything on, too. It's not just, is it snug in the chuck? Is it between centers? Use the other part of your brain, too because I've seen this many times. Somebody puts something in here, it's a little off balance. Well, they happen to have had it in a high speed. Big, big bad thing. Tears stuff up, throws pieces out, breaks the center. You know, it looks okay at first. They thought they were gonna be going 112 RPM and they end up, it was at 1600 for some reason, you know. Look everything over. And especially if you're new to this, don't, if you're really new, while you're looking everything over, go turn the main, main breaker switch, like this one. You have a separate off over there. That's a double shut off. Have them both shut off, you know? Check things over. Allow yourself to turn one on. Check again that this is in neutral. Turn the second one on. Then finally, you can turn the motor on. Now, when we look at everything one last time before you engage the motor, if there's no clutch or the clutch, Look at it again. You don't necessarily need to turn it at this point, but look at it again and think about how bad it's going to be if you were to get caught in it. Make sure beyond anything else that might fly out, make sure you're not caught in it. Then you can turn on the machine, which if we had it in gear, it would rotate. But I did not check that because I was just talking on a video. I was distracted. I was bad, bad John. Then you can turn it on. The big thing, make sure it's safe before you turn the machine on. Um, it's not so much how the machine is when you're not using it, but when you get ready to use it, for that five minutes down to one second, if you're quickly swapping out parts, make sure it's ready to go before you let it go. 